A long time ago, there was a young adventurer somewhere in a parallel universe, and his name was... Well, we're not sure about his real name. All we know is that his nickname was the Swordbreaker. Once, when he was in a tavern spending his last money on a pint of beer, he noticed two men at the next table arguing about something. One of them stood up, smashed a bottle against the table, and stabbed the other one with the jagged edges. The next minute, the billion was gone. The adventurer rushed up to the dying man. In his dead throes, the man grabbed onto the hero's clothes and, just before breathing his last, handed him a scroll. Later, when the hero shot himself in a room he'd rented for the night, he unrolled the scroll, which turned out to be an old map with a castle. The adventurer's face lit up. He was broke and badly needed money. So the next day, he set out on a great journey full of dangers and chance encounters. And welcome, my friends, to Swordbreaker. ASMR. Swordbreaker is a role-playing, visual novel, choose-your-own-adventure game, replicated through games and books. You simply select a path in the adventure that is laid upon you. By selecting this video, you have chosen the path, having a heart of a coward. You ain't no hero. You're just here to get rich, get home, and get paid. Maybe something more. Regardless, you're a cunning sort. You know how to get exactly what you want and get out of the way of danger. So, sit back and relax as we begin Swordbreaker, Heart of a Coward, ASMR. Please enjoy, my friends. After a long and tiring journey, the hero approached a huge ancient castle. From the look of it, the castle had been abandoned many centuries ago. But something gave him a mysterious feeling he wasn't alone. The adventurer saw an open window on the second floor. Which way to go? Walk through the gates or climb in through the window? You make a choice. Very simple. Choose what you want to do. And the visual novel adventure will continue or end depending on your choices and if they were correct or not. We are going through with the Swordbreaker with a heart of a coward. What would he do in this situation? Going through the gates is too obvious. Let's be more cunning and sneaky and slip through the window. It took the hero a lot of effort to climb up to the second floor in his armor. Now he was in a guard room just above the castle gates. It looked like there had been a fight here. Dead warriors, or rather, their skeletons, were scattered on the floor. Suddenly, one of the skeletons moved and tried to stand up, raising his longsword. Make a choice. Now, should the adventurer take a running kick at him while the warrior is still on the floor, jump out the window, or wait until he gets up and take it like a man? Uh, that guy doesn't look like he's going to be very friendly. You know what? Like a boss, we're going to jump out the window. Avoiding conflict altogether. The hero found himself in the castle courtyard. It was in ruins and desolation. Everything was covered with a thick layer of dust. Among the clutter on the floor, the hero noticed a manhole leading to the sewers. There was also a door nearby. What's your choice? Go through the door or climb through the manhole? Let's go down the manhole. I doubt anything dangerous is under there. We can sneak into the castle and find its treasures. 
Ugh, what a stench. The hero climbed down the ladder and found himself at the bottom of the sewers full of rats, bones, and dirty pools. Looks very hygienic. On the wall, he noticed some weird-looking mushrooms glowing in the dark. Should the adventurer go down into the tunnel, eat a mushroom, or rummage in the pile of bones? Mm, those mushrooms don't look very edible. Let's go on. The tunnel led the hero to a crossroads. There were free signboards ahead. Torture chamber, prison, and slug's house. Which way to go? Uh, I don't like the sound of any of those. Prison? Nah, I'm too pretty to go to prison. Torture chamber? Oh, forget it. Slug's house? Maybe Slug is just a... Maybe it's just somebody's name. Maybe he's a nice guy. Let's go to Slug's house. The adventurer had no idea what he'd find in the Slug's house. The putrid sewers were covered with slimy goo. This place was completely empty. Not a single chair to sit on. What a dodgy place, thought the hero. The floor was covered with bones and armor. Maybe he should go back, get a move on with his sword drawn, or run across this den. There's got to be something of value at the end of here. Let's run across. Ugh! The adventurer ran across to the opposite wall and went into a large hole. There it was, the slug's house. Slug wasn't the name of a nice guy. It was a literal slug. In front of him was a snail-like creature. I think it's called a slug. As soon as it saw the hero, it crawled towards him. Should he try to run away from the slug or chop its head off? Uh, no. I'm good. Let's get out of here. Best self-defense is don't be there. Hmm? What's this? Sickening. As he moved on, the adventurer found a storeroom where the slug was keeping its victims. People and animals lay there covered in some slimy goo. Many were already dead. But one man seemed to be breathing. Should the hero rescue him? I'd hate to be in this situation. Release the survivor. There you go, buddy. The adventurer cut through the goo and released the victim. Thank you for saving my life, kind sir. I thought I was done for. And as they say, one good turn deserves another, he said. What were you doing here? Asked the hero. The necromancers brought me here as feed for their slug. Ugh, said the man. Right. You better get out of here now, said the adventurer, and went on his way. Well, we made a friend. The hero went down the sewer tunnel and stumbled upon a room with a weird-looking creature inside. This little ugly elf had a key in his belt, the key that can probably unlock the door behind him. Should the adventurer talk to the elf? Let's be polite, don't want to annoy the elf. Who are you? How do I get to the treasury? Asked the hero. I'm Stinky, the sewer elf. Nice name. One of the ways to the treasury is right behind this door. It's locked, but I've got the key, and I can open it for you. If you do something for me, that is. I was walking down these magnificent sewer tunnels one night when I lost my gold ring. I'll let you through the door if you help me find it, said Stinky. Give Stinky a hand? Or kill him and take the key. Sure. Sh sure, let's help Stinky out. Nah, screw him. Let's go back down this tunnel. Stinky gives me the creeps. Uh, great choices here. Prison or the torture chamber? Well, never thought I'd be saying this, but let's go to prison. The hero was in the prison now, with cages hanging from the ceiling and small, filthy cells full of dead prisoners all around him. The prisoners had been long dead, but suddenly the adventurer heard someone cry quietly into one of the far end cells. Should he go up and check on them? Go upstairs to the top level of the prison. 
or maybe take a break and have a nap in one of the cells. Let's check on the prisoner. A girl? The cry led the hero to a prison cell. Inside, among some animal carcasses, he saw a crying girl about ten years old. The girl noticed the adventurer, rushed up to the bars and cried, Help! Let me out! Should he break the lock and rescue her? Or let her be and go to the upper level? Nah, little girl. Gives me the creeps. Keep her in the cell. The adventurer went upstairs and saw two doors on both sides, and an open cell at the end which gave him a weird feeling. Which way to go? Left door, right door, or go to the cell? The cell gives us a weird feeling. Let's try the right door. Right is right. The door led the hero to the guard's chamber. The guard himself, a huge wicked hulk, was sitting at his table and writing. I hope you didn't let that vampire girl out, he said. Vampire? Just as well we never released that girl. She could be hundreds of years old for all we know. Huh. Well, our, our cowardice saved our life, though. No, it's not cowardice. Uh, we knew We knew she was a... Yeah, we knew she was a little girl. That was a vampire. We totally knew that. We were just cunning. Yeah, that's totally what we did. Anyways, back to the narration. I hope you didn't let that vampire girl out, he said. I didn't. Who are you? asked the hero. Me? I'm the prison guard. But I don't think you're welcome here. We could either send you to the uranium mine or to the infirmary. They do need new guinea pigs, you know. Are you brave enough to fight me? said the guard. Make your choice. Uh... I'm too pretty to work in the mine. That sounds like tough work. I don't want to fight this guy. I'm definitely not brave enough to take him on. Uh, without beating me up, take us to the infirmary. The adventurer entered the door which said infirmary. In the past it was used for treating people living in the castle. But now it was abandoned. In front of him, the hero saw a long hallway with several doors on both sides. A nurse's office, general practitioner, gynecologist, and head doctor, Mr. F. Kruker. The hero could also go further down the hallway. Which way to go? F. Kruker? Why does that name ring a bell? I can eradicate evil only if I kill all the leaders, thought the adventurer, and headed to the head doctor's office. It was spacious, but empty and deserted. Not for long, though. A pool of blood appeared on the floor, and out of it emerged the head doctor himself, Mr. F. Kruker. He was wearing a striped shirt, long shorts, and a hat. He had burns all over his body, and his fingers ended with steel hooks. I'm Fred Krueger. I'm in charge of this place. What brought you here, bitch? Wait a minute, that's not in the narration. wonder why I said that. Anyways, Krueger asked the hero. What should he answer? I've come to destroy you, you freak. Or, uh, I have an appointment to the gynecologist. Hmm. This Mr. F. Kruker looks very familiar. Almost like I've played him in an ASMR roleplay, and he's a horror icon. Then again, maybe I'm just that scared of this guy that I can't think straight. Uh, yeah, Mr. F. Kruker, I'm not going to exterminate you. I'm totally here for my routine checkup to the gynecologist. I haven't been in a while. Or ever, for that matter. Uh... I have an appointment to the gynecologist. Oh, I see. What's well, right next door? Said Fred. Huh, what a nice guy. Huh? As soon as the hero entered the gynecologist's office, 
He was taken by the arms and pushed into the examination chair by a couple of zombie doctors who strapped his arms and legs. Next to the chair, the adventurer saw a small table with surgical instruments on top. Should he try and free himself or see what will happen next? I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. But let's have faith. Let's wait and see what happens. Maybe they're good gynecologists. Rather than trying to break free, the adventurer thought better of it and decided to wait. Right, we can deal with him later. Let's go chat with the girls at the nurse's office, one of the doctors said. As soon as they left, the hero leaped into action. Should he reach for the scalpel or start rocking in his chair? Yeah, let's get the scalpel. Let's get the hell out of here. The adventurer managed to reach the scalpel on the table, cut the straps, and sneak out of that horrible place. Whew, close call. As the hero was making his way through the dirty, cluttered hallway of the infirmary, he noticed a very clean bed left intact by some miracle. Should he lie down for a while, or go on? Totally no risk involved. Yeah, let's go for a nap. Hopefully you are too. In a less creepy place. The adventurer lay down and fell asleep. After a short nap, he could go on. The hero came to a large steel door. Behind it was a training hall. Castle guards and warriors used to master the art of war here. Swords, shields, bows, and bones of dead warriors were scattered on the floor. Then the adventurer noticed training dummies for the guards, and a passage in the wall leading to a shooting range for the archers. Should the hero rummage through this place, or go to the shooting range? Let's go to the range. The hero entered the range. It was also in ruins, with a thick layer of dust everywhere. At the far end, he saw shooting targets for the archers. All of a sudden, a ghost appeared in front of him. It was an archer spirit. The adventurer didn't know what to do. Attack him with his sword? Escape? Or try and talk to the spirit? Ah, uh, archer spirits. They give me the creeps. Let's get out of here. The adventurer rushed out of the range before the spirit could attack. At least we are not one of his targets. The adventurer entered a classroom with some desks and a blackboard. The floor was tiled in black and white. The Lord's children probably used to study here, but now it was dead silent. There were two notes, one on the desk close to the hero, the other one at the back. Should the adventurer read the note on the table nearby or move on? Read the note, it could have something useful. The adventurer decided to read the note. It was probably written by a child. The note said, Our biology teacher showed us her botanical garden today. There were lots of flowers there, and one of them was huge and really scary. She told us if we didn't study harder, she'd feed us to it. We were so frightened that we tied her up and fed her to the plant instead. That's not very nice. In case she rises from the dead, we've mined the classroom floor can only step on the black tiles. The hero carefully walked at the end of the classroom, skipping the white tiles. There was another note at the back desk. Should he read it or leave the classroom? Ah, uh, cryptic notes. Children, they give me the creeps. Let's get out of here. Through the winding corridors, the hero came to the servants' quarters. It was a small room with two doors saying M and F, which obviously stood for male and female rooms, which one to enter. I'm a big man. I'm a big boy. Let's go for the male room. The adventurer entered the room for male servants. The room looked like a barracks with rows of beds along the wall and some wardrobes on the other side. It was just as messy and full of junk as the other chambers. There were skulls and bones everywhere. On one of the beds, the adventurer noticed a piece of paper. Should he read it? We like reading. The hero decided to read the note, written with a trembling hand. 
The author was clearly very frightened. Like ourselves. Wait, did I say that out loud? <clears throat> Anyways, reading voice. We barricaded ourselves in the room hoping to those... Hoping that those damn necromancers won't get us. They've killed almost all the guards and workers. That's just us and a couple of maids who shut themselves in their room. I hope they're fine. I was told some necromancers can be defeated with garlic, just like vampires. The garlic is hidden under the bed. You can also kill them with a sword, of course, but that would be much harder. I can hear someone picking the lock from the outside. Oh no. The note wasn't finished. The necromancers must have broken in. And the poor servants had no time to react. Poor servants. Suddenly, the room was filled with darkness, revealing an old necromancer. It was a lean old man with a shaven head. He was wearing a dark cloak with a high collar, adorned with skulls and symbols of death. He looked the hero in the eye, waved his hands, and began to cast a spell. Should the hero hide under a bed or try to knock him down? Hide? We love hiding, but I don't think it's going to work. He can see us. We could fight him head to head and knock him down. But that would be difficult. We don't like difficulty. We like the easy way. Luckily, we have some garlic. I hope this works. Is that really going to work? Garlic on a necromancer? Oh well. Guess there's only one way to find out. The adventurer grabbed some garlic from under the bed and threw it at the necromancer. Huh. That did the trick. The garlic got stuck to the warlock, burning holes in his body. The necromancer began to tear the garlic off himself, writhing in pain. But there was too much of it. Finally, the villain collapsed on the floor, lifeless. The adventurer can now continue on his way down the dark hallways of the castle. The next moment, the hero found himself in a spacious, luxurious room with a magnificent bed next to the wall. This was the chamber of Lord Neo IV himself. The adventurer felt some dark vibes from this place. It was as if someone was watching him. Ugh. What should he do next? Rummage through the wardrobe for something useful? Or lie down in the bed? Take a nap? We've already had one nap. Can't hurt to have another one. Yes, that's a great idea. The adventurer lay down on the magnificent bed and fell asleep. In his dream, he was in a strange place called the Astral World. Once inside, the hero found himself in a spectacular otherworldly room. Suddenly, a beautiful girl appeared before him out of thin air, beckoning him. Should he approach her? Come closer to the girl. Or no way. No way. Creepy demon looking woman? Ugh, they give me the creeps. I know you. You're that damn succubus who wasted so many lives in this castle, shouted the hero. Oh, do you? Well then, you just gave me another reason to kill you, said the succubus, smiling at the adventurer. The demoness summoned a whip and gave it a wave. Should the adventurer dash away from it, or try to fend it off with the sword? I love to run away, but we're in the astral world. Ward off the whip. There are times to run and there are times to fight. When the adventurer saw the whip coming at him, he waved his sword and cut off its end. The next second he threw his sword at the demoness, but the succubus deftly move aside. Now that he lost his sword, what should the hero do? Dash to the demoness and strike her with the sword breaker. Or see what she's going to do next. Uh, uncertainty about what the enemy's going to do. That gives me the creeps. Hit her with the sword breaker attack. Without thinking twice, the hero rushed to the demoness and plunged his sword breaker into her flesh. Succubus let out a moan and sagged to the floor. When her body began to disappear, the adventurer found himself still laying in the bed. That was weird. Oh well. 
Then he got up and went on his way. The adventurer entered a dark room. In the corner there was a man in black armor sitting on a chair. Scary. The room didn't have any more doors. In the other corner he noticed a glowing magical portal. This must be the portal room. Well, it's got a portal in it. Go figure. Who are you? asked the hero. I'm Sylvester. I am the Knight of the Temple of Fate. It is my job to protect the portal from the necromancers, said the man. Oh, I, I was just looking for them. And for the treasury, especially the treasury. Will you let me through? asked the adventurer. Only you can choose your path. How did you prove yourself? Who did you help? Did you kill a lot? Or maybe you have a yellow streak down your back. How did you know that? Oh. Continue. I can read you like a book, you know. This room will lead you to your destiny. Prepare yourself and enter the portal, said the knight. All right. We've made it this far. We faced many horrible trials, but we have lived to see the day. Perhaps the day can come where we can call ourselves a true hero. Let's enter the portal and see what the trial has in store for us. All right, let's go. What the? Huh? The hero entered the glowing portal, and reality warped around him. When the adventurer opened his eyes again, he found himself in a spacious room with four magical portals. What kind of trial is that? The hero wondered. Then he heard the knight of the Temple of Fate. Your actions have shown your true colors. You escape from danger all the time and never try to help anyone. Because you are a coward. So in the trial you deserve, you will have to face a wimp just like you. A freak of nature who's not worth living in this world. I give you... Sponge Joe, cried the knight. The next moment, a strange creature came out of the portal. It really was just a huge sponge, which looked ridiculous and silly. Should the hero slash it with his sword or talk? Talk to Joe or attack? Uh, sponge creatures, they give me the creeps. Maybe he's not violent? Maybe we can be friends. Let's talk to Joe. I don't want to fight with you, said the hero. Me neither, sir. Let's be friends. You can play chess or backgammon. How about a game of hide and seek right now? The adventurer could clearly see. That idiot wouldn't just leave him alone. Putting up with this nonsense was a real challenge for him. Should the hero play hide and seek with Joe? Or kill him? Play with Joe or attack the sponge? He seems like a friendly enough guy. I mean, he's offering to be our friend. Silly as he looks. All right. Let's play, Joe. Why not? I'll hide and you'll seek. Yeah, I'll definitely hide, the hero said slyly. Great, said Joe. He closed his eyes and started counting. The adventurer dashed for the exit and ran down the corridors until he saw a huge double door that probably led to the throne room. Should he enter the room or look for the treasure? Hmm. The throne room probably holds the necromancers. We ain't no hero. We're not here to save the day. We're here for the greatest heist of all time. Obtain the diamond and get the hell out of here. I've seen enough weird crap to last a lifetime. To the treasury we go. Since it's the jewels that I'm looking for, why would I enter the room and fight the necromancers? Wondered the adventurer. So he continued with his quest for hidden treasures. Winding passages finally led him to a huge round door. It must have been the treasury. When the hero pulled the handle, a discharge of magical energy went through his body. The door was locked. Hmm. How's it open? Should the adventurer say, I am Lord Neo the Fourth. 
or take a better look at the door. Uh, let's use the passphrase. I am Lord Neo the Fourth, said the hero. And voila, a second later he heard a creak of unoiled hinges, and the door opened. Behind it was a large chamber full of gold and jewels. In the middle, the adventurer saw an enormous diamond sitting on a pedestal. Jackpot. His face lit up, and he rushed to the gem, throwing caution to the wind. That's when he noticed a wrinkled old man in his way. Ugh, wrinkled old men. They give me the creeps. That's my diamond, and this is my treasury, he yelled. Who the hell are you, scum? asked the adventurer. How dare you? I'm Lord Neo the Fourth, and this is my castle. I've been hiding here for many years. That wretched succubus is haunting my kin, you see. The treasury is protected with a very powerful spell. Only the password is a bit too weak, as I can see, said the Lord. What? Don't you know? The castle has long since been seized. You have no idea how sick this place is. Oh, well, I, I couldn't care less. I've come for the gem. As for the rest, I'll leave it to you. Bye now, said the hero, and headed for the diamond. Oh, that explains it. I kept wondering why they stopped bringing me food. You can't have treasures anyway, cried Neo, and went for the hero with an ancient-looking sword and a shield. Should the adventurer kick the shield, or ward off the attack with the swordbreaker? Come on, old man, don't mess with us. Give him a kick, that'll show him who's boss. The adventurer caught the right moment and kicked the shield, sending Neo flying into a heap of gold. That took the lord completely by surprise. Should the hero finish him, or grab the gem and run away? I'd love to grab the diamond. But Neo is a frat. Sorry, Neo, but, you know, you ain't fast, you last. Let's send Neo to the Shadow Realm. Without thinking twice, the hero chopped the Lord's head off with the Swordbreaker, splashing blood all over the place. The adventurer took the diamond from the pedestal and went back. Now his quest was over. He could sell the gem and live comfortably off the money until the rest of his life. The hero must have taken a wrong turn and found himself in a long hallway with windows to his left. On the floor there were old bones and someone's armor. It was all rather suspicious. Should he run through the hallway or climb out of the window? Hmm. Looks a bit suspicious over here. Like a boss, and how we began our adventure, let's go through a window. Now that he had the most expensive diamond in the world, the adventurer decided not to push his luck and climb through the window. He found himself at the courtyard with the gates right ahead. He was just going to leave when he heard some noise. Someone fell out of the window right in front of him. It was Sponge Joe? He stood up, cleaned himself up a bit, and said happily, There you are. I found you, friend. No way, Joe. This is not a game. I'm leaving. You stay here. And by the way, we're not friends, the adventurer said angrily. I wish we were friends. But I can't stay here. Fate brought us together. Now I'm your friend for eternity. I'll go wherever you go. We can play games, cried Joe. No way, the hero said, bewildered. Let's go. I don't like it here. We'll live at your place. It'll be fun, you'll see, Joe said with a smile. Now let's see the coward's epilogue. This is how the story ends for the cowardly adventurer. He sold the diamond and bought himself a small castle. He couldn't complain, he was a living legend after all. But still he was lonely. He had no friends, people stayed away from him. All because of Joe. He was always by his side, laughing, making a fool of himself, but the hero couldn't do anything about it. 
and so they lived together in a magnificent castle and played hide-and-seek every morning. Woohoo! Da -da 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 -da. Well, that adventure was... That adventure was, um... Something. Nonetheless, congratulations, we found our ways to the treasures of the castle. Although we became a coward. We weren't a coward. We were just fighting in the opposite direction. And hey, we made a friend at the end of the story. Sponge Joe. Ain't that great? <laughs> but yeah. Thank you for watching Swordbreaker ASMR. Heart of a Coward. And if you look on the castle map, you can see the many, many paths we could have taken through the castle, many of which lead to our early doom. So while it's not very glamorous to be a coward, it does spare you a variety of terrible fates. And we lived to become rich and famous, but mostly friendless. We only have Sponge Joe at the end. But still, nonetheless, we survived. And so brings a close to Swordbreaker, Heart of a Coward, ASMR. Let me know what you thought about this playthrough. If you'd like to see more, in a playlist, there will be two alternate playthroughs. If you'd like to play as more of a traditional hero, please watch Swordbreaker, Heart of a Hero, ASMR. Or if you feel like being more ruthless and violent, feel free to check out Swordbreaker, Heart of a Killer, ASMR. This is a unique and fun visual novel role-playing game experience, and I highly recommend it to you all. It's actually in all stores it is sold on, as a very inexpensive and cheap game to buy, so I fully recommend it for a fun, engaging adventure, which you can choose. Your playthrough could be completely different from mine. All three of them, that is. But until then, thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. I am Alakazam ASMR, and thank you for watching Swordbreaker ASMR. I'll see you all in the next great adventure, my friends. Take it easy. I believe in you. You got this. And adios, my friends. See you soon.